Howdy folks and welcome back to Chuck and Steel. Just going to do a little bit of a shoot and talk today because I've had so many people to ask me about my shooting style. I figured it was time to talk about it. But the wind has been blowing so bad here recently I haven't really been able to get any shooting in for the last four weeks. So, I'm going to do a little bit of shooting and then we'll get to talking. I've just now realized that I've got a big hole in my band. I carried these things in my pocket all day yesterday hoping the wind would stop. So I'm pretty sure I probably snagged it on something. But let's uh, shoot a couple of times and then we'll talk about my shooting style. Right, got a hit on the 60. Might as well go ahead and go for the 40 for my band's break. All right. Let's try the 25. Ooh. A little low and right. There we go. Good solid center hit. But anyway, I've had a lot of people asking me recently, you know, what's my shooting style? Is it full butterfly, three quarter butterfly, long draw? What is it? And the answer to that question is it's all the above. I cut nearly all my band sets to be able to full butterfly all the time. So same band set for everything. I can full butterfly this, no problem. And it's not even maxed out. I can, I could pull it some more if I had more arm reach. I just don't have any more arm reach. I never max my bands out. And I know that's weird to a lot of people that I use the same band set for everything, but it's just the way I do it. And the reason for that is the way I've taught myself to do it. And uh, it's just, to me, it's the privilege of shooting butterfly. You know, for instance, when I'm out here shooting targets, I very rarely shoot full butterfly because you don't need the speed or the energy of full butterfly to hit that little spinner. But if I'm out hunting, you know, I'm a full butterfly. If I need to hit a prairie dog at 50 yards, I'm going to need all the speed and energy I can get, so I'll full butterfly then. But just sitting out here target shooting, uh, you know, three-quarter, maybe a little more than three-quarter butterfly most of the time. You know, it's just uh, it depends on the situation and the you know, what I'm shooting at, how far away it is, all that stuff matters on how far I draw. And I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear. They want to hear, you know, different band lengths and things like that. But that's just not the way it is for me. I, I, everything I do is judged on how far I draw these bands back. It's kind of weird, I know, but it's the way I do it. Uh, everything about the way I shoot, you know, is, is just different. It's unconventional. For instance, uh, like I shoot thumb down, which until recently I hadn't, you know, I think there's a few people that I ain't saying they copied me. I'm not saying that, but, you know, they've mentioned, you know, they're trying out my, my thumb down style and they like it. To me, it's just better. Now, I understand that if you're shooting full butterfly, that I do lose about three inches of draw with the same amount of arm span, wingspan. So in other words, if I was shooting thumb on top and I draw all the way, I would get maybe three more inches of draw than I would going thumb bottom, thumb on bottom like I shoot. Because with my thumb on bottom, when I draw all the way back, my wrist is kicked like this instead of being straight. So instead of, you know, normally when I shoot it, my wrist is kicked up like this. I'll stretch all the way out and my wrist will be kicked up. I ain't going to pull them because they got a bad hole in them. But if I were to cup it like this, I get, you know, instead of being kicked, I get a full, full draw. But for me, I'm much more accurate shooting thumb down. So I shoot thumb down and I'm willing to, to lose that three inches of draw because to be honest with you, you're probably only get, gaining maybe four feet per second out of it. And it's not worth me missing a target try to get that extra four feet per second so i shoot thumb down that's the way i'm the most accurate so that's the way i do it now also i don't pinch the ball you hear a lot of people say pinch just the ball and if i were going to teach somebody how to shoot i would say pinch 
the ball, not in front of the pouch. I do not pinch in front of the pouch neither, though. The way I do it is my fingers have a certain position that they get in so that my that ball locks in. I don't, like when I, let me show you. Best way to do it is to show you. Like when I draw, that's what my fingers look like. They're not holding just the ball. They're slightly in front of the ball, and they're locked there. I'm not pinching it. I'm not pinching in front of the ball. I've just got my fingers locked there, just like that. And what that does is the ball can slide backwards, but it can't be pulled through my fingers. Weird, I know. Well, I've taught myself. Now, how do I aim? I aim different than, than a lot of people because I have a floating anchor. And people with floating anchors know what I'm talking about. But I even do it different than just about anybody else because having a floating anchor, I have taught myself over time where, where my hand is in reference to my frame. So in other words, I pretty much shoot instinctive all the time. Even though I'm aiming and I'm using my fork tip as a reference, I'm still going by feel. And the best way to explain that is if I'm going to draw back and shoot, shoot the camera, for instance, if I draw and I'm going to shoot that camera and I draw back and my mind is telling me, aim right at that lens. I put that fork tip right on that lens, just like that. Well, the next time I draw back, it might tell me, hey, your hand is in a different spot this time. You need to aim higher. So I'll aim higher. And 99.99% .99 of the time, my mind is correct. And it's weird, I know, because I never use the same aiming point twice. Every shot is different for me. And it's, it's dumbfounding on how you can be accurate that way, but it's just from muscle memory, you know. My mind has learned, has taught itself. When I draw back, for instance, if I draw back and I'm going to aim, if, like right now I'm aiming at the target, my hand is right here. Well, the next time I do it, it might, my hand might not be in the exact same spot. So when I draw back, all right, now my, my mind is telling me to aim a little higher on that shot because my, my hand must have been a little higher than it normally is. You know, sometimes I have five or six shots where I aim dead on the fork tip every time, and then the sixth shot, my mind will tell me, hey, you need to aim a little higher. And I'll aim a little higher, and I'll get a dead on hit. And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. A lot of people want to hear and see how I shoot so that, so that they can teach their self that. But what I'm telling you is, is I, I can't teach anybody how I shoot because the way I shoot is so different. It's, uh, it's mostly instinctive. Even, even though I'm aiming, my mind is telling me to make small adjustments. And it's the weirdest thing ever, I know, but it's just the way I shoot. Oh, I wished I could tell you that, you know what, I pull back and I aim dead on that fork tip every time, and that's where I hit, but that's not the case. Now, if I was short draw, and I had a solid anchor point to anchor to, I could tell you every time I put that fork tip on my target, and I release, and it's going to hit. I could know that for a fact, but it's not like that for me because, because of my floating anchor. You know, my, my, my arm might be in a different spot from one shot to another. And that makes it really hard to learn. But when you've shot it, as long as I have, your mind kind of just takes over. And uh, the way I taught myself to do this is I never had, I never had a, a face anchor, even when I, even back way back in the day, I never had a face anchor. I always draw back at least to my ear. I never did have a full-on target draw where I anchored to my face. I always drawed back a little further. But the way I taught myself how to do this is I didn't just jump straight into butterflying. I started out like this, then it went to this, and then it went to this, and then it went to this, and then it went to this. And eventually, it got so far that it was hurting my wrist to draw back with thumb on top. So I went to thumb on bottom and then I could get more and more and more span. And that's just how it happened. Uh, I really wish that I could say 
and explain to you how I do it. I just can't. Uh, every shot is different from one shot to the next. I may aim directly at the target one time. The next time, I may aim a half inch above it or an inch below it. It just depends on what my mind is telling me. But anyway, I know this probably didn't help nobody, but it is explaining how I shoot, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you would, please subscribe, like, comment, share the videos, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.